welcome friends once again to this uh, NPTEL MOOC module on uh, international trade theories and empirics. We are uh, at the verge of uh, finishing the you know 10th week of uh, the lectures. Uh, now, after the discussion of uh, you know um, um, foreign exchange market and their dynamics, we have addressed the issues like you know um, the short run overshooting, the long run changes, emphasizing uh, the you know role of prices, the expected or inflation rate, the real exchange rate and exchanges, how it is connected to you know. Uh, uh, connected to the nominal exchange rate and also we discuss about uh, Fisher's effect uh, and, 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 and its implications in the long run exchange rate. Now, here uh, as a uh, policy you know uh, implications connecting to capital mobility and uh, you know uh, the exchange rate regime there are uh, uh, problems uh, uh, related to uh, a trial trilematic you know problem we are going to emphasize in this lecture. So, let us have the introduction on it that the foreign exchange uh, in the free floating regime uh, where monetary authority allow authorities allow world markets uh, through the you know changes in the interest rate expectations uh, about relative prices productivity uh, trade levels uh, to determine the prices of different currencies in terms of another currency. Okay, the free float uh, is actually uh, uh, characterized by uh, tremendous uh, exchange rate volatility and unfettered international capital mobility. All right, so it is also characterized by national, uh, you know, uh, central banks uh, with tremendous discretion over uh, domestic monetary policy. So, uh, you know why exchange rate and its free floating aspects are important and the role of monetary authority, what kind of stand it could take and where it is impossible. Sometimes we say impossibility trinity, we are going to explain all those things in, in, in a short while. The free float is not however, the only possible international monetary regime. Okay. In fact, it has uh, pervaded the world economy. Uh, only since the early 1970s and many nations even today do not embrace it, uh, embrace the free flow uh, exchange rate regime. Between World War II and the uh, early 1970s, much of the world uh, that is uh, so uh, you know the so called first and free world uh, was on a managed fixed you know for an exchange regime uh, that is otherwise called uh, the Britain Wood system. Okay, uh, which uh, got collapsed in 1973 which, uh, that we have already mentioned. Before that many nations were on gold standard okay, uh, uh, following their currency and the exchange rate. Coming to the title of the presentation of the lecture is on impossible trinity or the trilemma uh, that uh, the trilemma or the impossible trinity of, of international monetary regimes are, are discussed through you know, examples. Now, uh, please uh, note that uh, those were the prevailing regimes by which we are uh, uh, know, uh, discussing about the uh, impossibility trinity. Because nations you know, determine their monetary relationship with the rest of the world individually, some countries uh, have always remained outside the uh, prevailing system often for strategic reasons. Okay, they, they, uh, some countries might take you know strategic you know steps not by adopting any regime uh, so quickly. In the 19th century for example, some uh, nations uh, choose a silver rather than a gold, st gold standard. Some allowed their currencies uh, to float in war time and others uh, go by a, a steady change in the exchange rate um, uh, pattern. Uh, in today's world, some uh, countries maintain fixed exchange rate rates as well. Usually, you know, have pegged ag against you know United uh, uh, States dollar, uh, and uh, or also some some currencies manage their uh, currencies, uh, so their exchange rates stay within a band or range. Sometimes they are called free uh, free floating or, or sorry or or called managed floating uh, regime. But just as no country can do away with scarcity or asymmetric information, none can escape the trilemma. 
this is important to note since you know the scarcity n and the information is not defined not estimated so correctly so no country can escape from the trilemma okay or the dilemma uh, with three components okay three components uh, that is also known as impossible trinity okay so impossible trinity in the foreign exchange market the three component we are mentioning here in this particular slide three components is basically on uh, you know uh, going by fixed exchange rate regime or uh, having some you know dis domestic discretionary monetary policy or capital mobility allowing capital mobility or going by fixed exchange rate regime or also having some discretionary monetary policy in the three head all cannot be yes if all are uh, not yes and there are some you know uh, you know uh, doubtful interpretations you know some changes are there and ambiguities are there so that therefore we say that you know all cannot be determined uh, so uh, easily okay under the spacey uh, you know gold standard uh, uh, you know uh, to, to, to the world war uh, to one we are going to discuss in a short while uh, that you know the fixed exchange rate uh, was was you know possible whereas the domestic monetary policy didn't have enough discretionary power and uh, uh, even if they have uh, the capital mobility in the brit note system till 1973 as i already mentioned say from especially from the second world war till the 1971 73 uh, that you know fixed exchange rate was, was, was uh, there uh, they could also have some you know extent of uh, monetary policy discretions but capital mobility was constrained okay uh, coming to the free float regime correctly uh, that is from 1973 where bitnode system got collapsed uh, till the present period uh, the, that you know fixed exchange rate regime was no longer valid and the other two are actually accepted that is uh, the domestic discretionary policy and uh, the you know capital mobility and in in the case of managed float uh, from 73 some countries also follow the managed floating with the float exchange rate with a band uh, of its upper limit and lower limit so uh, so fixed exchange rate for some times then also you know monetary policy they do so sometimes and capital mobility was actually uh, possible so the trilemma or impossibility trinity of the international monetary regime uh, shows only two of the three holy grails of international monetary policy that is fixed exchange rate and international financial ca capital and uh, domestic monetary uh, policy discretion have been simultaneously satisfied any two are simultaneously satisfied but not two not three together uh, here these two are satisfied here these two are satisfied here this and this and this is satisfied here you know um, is not satisfied correctly so uh, countries can uh, you know adroitly change uh, you know regimes when it suits them uh, but they cannot enjoy capital mobility uh, or fixed exchange rate or discretionary monetary policy uh, uh, at at uh, you know all time so that is because to maintain a fixed exchange rate a monetary authority that is the central bank has to make that uh, uh, rate its sole uh, you know consideration Thus, giving off uh, on domestic goals like inflation or employment or gross domestic product or it has to seal up the nation from the international financial system by cutting off uh, capital flows. Okay. Each component of that trilemma uh, comes laden with some cost and benefits. So, each major international policy regime has strength and weaknesses accordingly in order to go by a, a decision. So, in an ideal world nations would like to have fixed exchange rates and capital mobility and monetary policy discretion at the same time in order to reap their uh, you know respective benefits such as you know exchange rate uh, you know uh, stability for uh, importers and exporters, uh, liquid uh, security uh, is markets that allocate resources to their best uses uh, globally and the ability to change interest rate in response to foreign and domestic shocks. Uh, so, in the uh, real world however, trade off really exist uh, if a nation lowers its uh, domestic interest rate to you know stave off a recession for example, it is its currency 
will depreciate and hence exchange rate stability will also be lost. So, if the government firmly fixes the exchange rate correctly and the capital uh, will actually immigrate to places where it can earn higher in, uh, interest unless capital flows are restricted or, or, or mobility is sacrificed. So, that is how uh, you know uh, some restrictions uh, or some you know uh, or, or in all three directions we do not have the freedom. Okay. So, that is why it is called uh, a, a uh, you know problem. Uh, the uh, spacey standard which we have cited here uh, specially counted from 1797 until 1820 uh, or so Great Britain uh, abandoned the spacey standard. Uh, it had maintained for a long as uh, long as anyone could remember and allowed the pound sterling to float quite freely. Okay? And that was the period of almost non-stop uh, you know, uh, warfare known as uh, Napoleon Wars. Uh, the United States also abandoned its spacey standard uh, from you know, 1775 till 1781 and also from 1814 until 1817 from 1862 until uh, essentially uh, 1873. Uh, why is it so? Because you know there were also periods of war, war uh, fair and uh, their immediate uh, aftermath in the United States like some revolutions uh, especially war of 1820, uh, civil war etcetera. Uh, uh, so, uh, apparently during uh, you know uh, war time both countries found the species standard costly and preferred instead uh, to float with free mobility of financial capital that has allowed them to you know borrow abroad uh, you know borrow, borrow from abroad while simultaneously gaining discretion over domestic monetary policy essentially allowing them to found uh, to fund part of their cost uh, for the war with a currency tax. Uh, which is to say called uh, you know inflation. Okay, so, uh, the spacey standard we have discussed I have also mentioned uh, the, the period till uh, uh, till world war one. Now, now uh, the since you know the tr exchange rate trilemma the freedom is not uh, enjoyed in all the three direction any two are valid uh, at a go. Uh, so, let us sum off what we have discussed that the impossible trinity or the, or the trilemma which we discuss is one of those aspects of the nature of things like scarcity or information asymmetry uh, which makes life very difficult especially from the uh, country you know policy making uh, perspective. Spe uh, specifically the trilemma means that the country can follow only two of three policies together. Uh, international monetary policy uh, mobility or fixed exchange rate or discretionary monetary policy. Uh, to keep exchange rate fixed, central bank must either restrict capital flows uh, or give up control over the uh, monetary policy, so, uh, monetary, I mean domestic money supply. Uh, so, interest rate and price levels accordingly. This means that a country must uh, make difficult decisions about uh, which variable it, it wants to uh, you know, uh, control and which uh, it wants to give off to outside forces. So, the main uh, uh, four uh, major types of international monetary regime are spe spacey standard, standard uh, you know man, uh, managed fixed exchange rate, free float and managed float. Okay, out of all those th 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 four regimes we have discussed how these three directions of uh, regimes are, are actually impossible together. Okay. So, they differ in their solution so to speak the impossibility trinity uh, is, is actually valid. Species standard like uh, the classical you know, uh, gold standard maintain fixed exchange rates and allowed the free flow of financial capital internationally rendering it impossible to alter uh, domestic money supplies, interest rate and inflation uh, rates. Managed fixed exchange rate regimes like you know BWS allowed uh, you know central banks discretion and fixed exchange rates at, at the cost of restricting international capital flows. Under a free float free capital flows are again allowed okay, as is domestic discretion and monetary policy, but at the expense of security and stability of fixed exchange rates. With a managed float, uh, the last point to uh, note that uh, with a managed float, the same solution prevails until the uh, you know fixed exchange rate moves to the top or bottom uh, of the desired band, uh, at which uh, point the central banks gives up 
its uh, discretionary you know uh, domestic policies so as to consider on appreciating or depreciating its currency. So, these are all the details of uh, you know exchange rate uh, and its dynamics and how exchange rate dynamics are actually uh, captivated to certain you know bands all regimes are not simultaneously valid. Okay. In the next week we will also address some of these issues by uh, emphasizing the you know open economy macroeconomics model. Okay. With this I think I should stop here I will look forward to your participation. Thank you.